my lovely friends, it's Margaret, and today we are going to be talking about some things I don't like. In case you haven't read the title, this is me doing the Unpopular Opinions book tag because I've been meaning to do it and I needed some quick content because pfft, COVID brain is a thing and I think it's finally caught up to me. Actually, what really is happening is all of the ideas that I want to do require more work and time than I currently have in my life. So we're gonna do a tag today and that's gonna be cool. So I have my notes and what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna say that this was created by Kashan at the Book Archer. I will have the original video linked down below. Make sure that you go and check it out because like this is the person that did the tag. So, you know, give them the watch time because they deserve it. I have nine questions or there are nine questions which I should probably pull up on my phone because that's more because I didn't really write the questions, I just shorthanded them. So hold on. Where has my phone gone? I have to do something. It was over by the other bookshelf. Anyways, let me pull this up real fast on YouTube. Anyway. The first question for this tag is a popular book or series that you didn't like. I was gonna go with Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas because, or Throne of Glass, the series, but I realized that like there's potential for me to actually like the series despite all of the crap that went down in book two that I just was <laughs> annoyed by. So instead we're gonna go with the Divergent series because that was my jam and then Allegiant happened and my heart was broken. We could also probably talk about A Great and Terrible Beauty but then she the, the thing that happened at the end of that series that makes me mad at it, she does f apparently fix later in the Diviners, supposedly, which I am totally cool with. So, wish we'd have done that in the actual book series type thing, but you know, whatever. Anyways, so we're gonna go with Allegiant slash Divergent. I just, like, don't like it when authors do what she did because you spend so much time invested in this character and wanting this character to do well and have a happy ever after and all of that, like have a life outside of this conflict they have been embroiled in for three books. And I'm just like, the fact that she ended it that way just makes me angry. And I will never do that to my readers, at least not in the final book in the series. I might let you think that that's what happened, but I will never actually do that. So just know that. My characters will be like comic book characters. They can always come back. Number two is a book slash series that everyone hates but you love. I'm gonna say The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirhala. I just really enjoyed the fact that this book was a slow burn cat and mouse chase across an entire country. I realize there's not much plot outside of that until like the very, very end. Don't care, do not at all care. It was about the relationship for me and I really enjoyed it and was really invested in it and I am so happy. Like I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book. I don't see a lot of people who really like this book. It is so underrated in my opinion. Uh, I know that that can get to kind of like personal uh, preference, personal opinion room, but like this book was really good and people slept on it. So number three is a love triangle where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with or an OTP that you don't like. So character ending up, I don't really have any books, the book books, like, like novel books, but there is a manga. So if you don't want to know how Bleach ends romantically, you should stop watching or you should skip ahead to the next question, which is I don't know, just, just skip the next like 30 seconds or so. Um, yeah, Bleach, I did not like that we had this whole setup and this whole like we developed this relationship with Rukia and like the whole, so much of the storyline was Ichigo and Rukia from the beginning and then we're just like, nah, we're gonna have him be with Orhime and I'm just like, mm, this was so written by a man. <sighs> This is why Full Metal Alchemist is my favorite because the characters that develop a relationship are the ones that end up together. Like, I understand it's great that we have a male-female relationship that didn't end in romance, but that doesn't matter to me because I'm mad that my ship was not the final endgame ship. I'm just pissed about that. And I, like, why? Why? so many things, especially in the early series that I'm just sitting there going, well, why was that in this series if we weren't gonna go for it? What? The whole thing with Ichigo 
Pinocchio's dad and his mom. Why did that exist? Why? 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 Question number four is a popular genre that you hardly ever reach for. Horror. I think like, so I think I would probably like some horrors. I've heard of some that are interesting to me. They tend to be more on the thrillery line though. I've just never been drawn to it like I enjoy thrillers but I enjoy the aspect of thrillers as like picking or figuring out what's happening so I've never really been just invested in a horror there are a couple like I said that I do want to eventually check out and see if maybe I enjoy the genre but like for the most part just reading a book to scare you is not gonna work very much for me because I'm that person that can read thrillers while she's by herself at home alone at night and be fine for the most part, or at least not more anxious than she normally would be when being at home alone by herself in a giant freaking house. So number five is talk about a popular or beloved character that you do not like. I am about to alienate most of book Twitter, uh, or at least most of the shadow and bone people on book Twitter, and it is, it, it's the darkling. I just, dude can suck rocks. The deep, deep, burning passion. I do not like, like, I can get, I can get into some of the villains that we'll have out there. I'm okay, like, Loki, Loki is a fun villain. Loki is a mess. He likes causing chaos. I'm cool with that. But, like, when you get to the territory where you're manipulating teenage girls for your own gain, I just, uh, um, no, thank you. Like, no, thank you. I just reread Shadow and Bone. And I'm like, did I miss something the first time around? Did I? But no, it's worse the second time around because you're actually picking up on the stuff he does to manipulate the main character. And I'm just like, yeah, this guy can, can choke. Let's, he got what he deserved. <laughs> I'm sorry. He did. He got what he deserved because you, you think after doing what he did, I thing with that happening maybe it could have it could have been a wake-up moment I would have been really into that if that had been a wake-up moment and I really do want to but then he decides that and I'm just like sir you learned nothing and I'm done with him like I don't like it I think the relationship is inappropriate I just I've never been a huge villain stand in the first place unless your name is Selena Kyle but she's not actually a villain. She's technically an anti-hero because she's doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. No, she's doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. There we go. She's like, anyways, so, like, I can get, I can get behind some anti-heroes that are like, you know what? The only way to accomplish the thing that is right for people is for me to maybe do some bad stuff. Okay. But, like, the Darkling just slaughters people for fun no not for fun because it makes his ego happy and i am over it sorry if you're a darkling stan i understand the appeal of villains i just don't care i'm gonna be revisiting this topic we'll get more of it later but i'm just like pressed right now because i finished shadow and bone and yeah question number six is what is a popular author that you can't seem to get into i am going to go with Orson Scott Card. This is more of a conscious choice because I have actually read some of his works. I've read Ender's Game and then there's a Norse mythology series that I started. And in the process of reading this series, some gross stuff happened with one of the female characters. And I went, oh, that's kind of gross, but like, okay, character development could be a thing. Like, it's one of those things that it happens in the plot and you're like, okay, but like, teenage boy we could be going somewhere with this I could be okay like like it could be redeemable but then I read the author's note and I realized that like that grossness that that the stuff that was making me feel uncomfortable was making me feel uncomfortable because the author himself held those views about women and I just was like I'm done I'm not no thank you I don't need to read any more of this author if this is how he feels about women like sorry my sorry my dude I just like and that's not even that's before I even knew some of the other or heard of some of the other stuff like 
honestly, I'm not gonna, I haven't gone into my, figuring out what most of the other stuff is because I already know I don't like him. I already know that he writes books that are not for me and that I don't want to support him, don't want to read his books, none of that stuff. So I just, I try. Bye. Number seven is a popular trope that you don't like and this one was hard for me at first. It's really funny how long my brain went and sat and thought and was like, huh, I wonder what trope I don't like because in general, I for the most part do not dislike tropes when they're done well. Like I'll see stuff and I'm like, that was not done well and so I don't like your execution of that trope, but like tropes exist for a reason. They're there for a reason. It's because they are like blueprints for story elements that work and people enjoy and like we're drawn to. So like there is, obviously this isn't anyways but i just had to go back to my age old dislike which is the love triangle it's not because there's anything wrong with love triangles it's just because i'm the type of person that i want you to give me two people to ship together and i want you to tell me which two people to ship together and then write me an entire series about these two people being together do i get that most of the time no but i at least get some really cute moments that make me just melt so anyways it's all about the romance here on, on my channel and yeah I I don't like having to go back and forth like I have my favorite TV show in the world I stopped watching because I was like I'm gonna start watching again when we determine which of these guys because I'm tired of this back and forth and that's part of it I like I don't like the back and forth that happens a lot of the time in love triangles I'm just oh my god honey just pick one there are a few exceptions where I'm like okay but this love triangle has points one of my favorite series has a love triangle and it works out really well. It existed for a reason. The Hunger Games, I'm cool with that love triangle because again, it existed for a reason and not just for unnecessary drama that was going to frustrate me. Question number eight is a popular series that you have no interest in reading, uh, The Nevernight Chronicles. I already knew from the premise of the first book that it was going to be one that I would be on the fence about. So I waited until it finished to see if I was going to like it. And what I've heard about how the final book goes down, I know that it is not gonna be the book for me. On top of that, I am not going to be reading any of Jay Kristoff's solo works. I've already read the Illuminae Files, like I can't, you know, can't take that back. But like, I'm not gonna be reading any of his solo stuff because I just have heard some stuff about some of the, uh, the, the cultural appropriation and how he has reacted to being called out for that, that I'm just like, mm, I don't, there are lots of other fish in the sea, I can find a better one. So that's just kind of my opinion. He is a very good writer. Unfortunately, people can do stupid stuff and also write very good books. And the final one is, the saying goes, the book is always better than the movie, but what movie or TV show adapt adaptation do you prefer more than the book? Well, this once upon a time would have a very different answer because I would have said the hundred. Because the show was better than the books for six seasons and then season seven happened. So just like if you're gonna watch the hundred, watch up there's a hug and the very last episode of season six, just stop after that hug happens and pretend like nothing else has happened. Just do that. Um, I also could say The Expanse series, but I love them both equally at this point because the authors have very clearly kind of course corrected since the first book and made like made room to improve the narrative that they yeah basically if I had simply read the first book from that series I don't know if I would have continued on but the fact that I watched all of the show and then I read the books like I was actually attached to even the characters that I'm like okay actually this is kind of a gross character um because Thomas Jane is an amazing actor and is able to humanize and make you feel sympathy for a slightly annoying character like mm, Miller and TV show Miller is so much better than book Miller and it's mostly because we're not in TV show Miller's head so we don't get some of the my official answer is going to be Stardust I feel like Stardust yes it's campy yada 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 whatever the movie is so much fun it's so lighthearted. it's so just beautiful and wonderful and I love it and there's not a lot of difference between the book and the movie I'm gonna be honest like there are a few small tweaks however those small tweaks 
are things that like in the book I do not necessarily like. Like I think the ending is much happier and more hopeful in the movie. Uh, the ending of the book just makes me sad. And so I don't like sad things so I just get them out of my life. My life is sad enough without books making me sad as well. Yeet them as far as I can. I feel like the Stardust movie is, is, is in fact better than the book. Like the book is really well written. I just prefer it to the book. I would watch the movie. I don't know that I will. I might reread the book so that I can compare the two for my read a book series, but I'm never really going to be like, yes, let's read the book again. That is it. I have not researched whether or not any of my friends have done this tag. So if you are a friend of mine, if you are watching this channel, if you have not done this tag at all, do it. You are tagged. I tag you, Pikachu. Especially if your name is Pikachu. Please, Pikachu, if you are watching this, do the tag and then like, yeah, let me know. Tag me. Let me know that you did the tag because I told you to do the tag. Sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with me today. So let me know in the description box. Description box? That's me. Let me know in the comments. If you're feeling chatty, let me know your answer to one of these questions. Um, let's see. Which one of these do I want you to answer? Um, bum bum bum. How about you tell me, yeah, tell me the trope you're tired of seeing. That would be fun. I enjoy listening to people talk about what tropes they don't like, just because it's fun to kind of see how, you know, what people do and do. If you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me like the thumbs down emoji, or yeah, we're gonna go with the thumbs down emoji just to let me know that you watched the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, there will be videos over here. If you would like to see what else I do on my channel, check it out. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye. Oop, you can't see my hand. Bye.